quick like and subscribe in the next five seconds to avoid bad luck during 2020 please no 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 Oh, this is going to be a Clash of Titans 2. Insanely aggressive, insanely good controller players going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This will be a 1v1 for the day. This is yes, there it is. I was going to say, you <laughs> there know it he's going to celebrate. And it was so worth it. He picks up 5-5-500 material off of each. So Crash padded? Bro, this guy is like a drone. He doesn't know what he's doing. And he just drops that. No, this isn't how I die, right? Wait. Oh my god. Hey, Fortnite Moments fans. Want more V-Buck giveaways? Make sure to use code BEAST in the item shop. And we'll continue to give out redemption codes just like this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. Actually, I'm just kidding. I'm getting word, gentlemen. It's time. The games are prepared. So for right now, we're actually going to send it over to our casters, Monster D-Face and Aussie Antics. Guys, take it away. We're looking at the NA East region to kick off. These players have already went through the gauntlet, and it looks like the battle bus is already underway. Yeah, not just the player we need to watch. Definitely a drop spot we need to watch. The more I feel like Fortilla is that mythic drop that doesn't get talked about as much in the opens and semis. Just the items there, the infinite chug and uh, Ocean's Burst AR. It's beautiful weapons for these more stack lobbies, right? Range weapons that do a lot of damage. And if you get tagged back, you're trying to get those Storm Surge tags, which is going to be a big element of today's gameplay. Having that infinite chug just to trade off is just such an unbelievable way to get yourself into the end game healthier and that's where a lot of these fights are going to break down and dubs obviously coming out top five uh yesterday in boogers cup round two is definitely something we need to look out for in these stacked game lobbies i mean everyone at home casual or competitive fan i'm sure has heard of dubs yeah and that's the thing right people forget dubs is may not have gotten a first place in the recent tournaments but top five performances dream hack in a east now Booga Cup back to back and here he's returning for the FNCS solos competition so it will be no surprise to see dubs at the top of the food chain but we have a fight popping off here with Bucky now Bucky's still gonna get the tags that's a white one right there 25 tag not too heavy with that green charge one more you got to think it'll do it though it's got to do at least what 75 damage play goes down on 85 there it is just enough though that was close not being enough but bucky backed his aim there straight through the box we're seeing a, a lot of aggressive fights breaking he talked about the food chain here bucky someone who is known to be the top of the food chain especially in uh team game modes him uh creo and canada have been destroying in trios he did really well with creo in duos but hasn't had that standout performance in solos i think in in a little bit so i'm excited to see if he can pull that off here today Getting the nostalgic vibes here, watching him back in action now in a little bit of a box fight. Let me see what he can do. He is definitely cornered, though, as you said. I'm getting straight up Volt vibes here. It looks like he's trapped quite literally in this weird spot here. He does have an exit up above him, behind him, where this broken structure is. And no, instead, he's the one that's got this player trapped. He's the one in the power position. And just like that, Ozervo falls down and Aspect gives him a little bit of taunt to go with it. Some salt in the wounds here for the drop spot. And oh, it's one of those new drop spots. I mean, I was saying with you, I'm sitting here trying to figure out where this is on the map. I obviously, being Australian, haven't had too much time to give this uh, new drop a go. I think it dropped in for me last night at about 9 or 10 o'clock at night. So interesting spot. And again, obviously, these people, this is how this tournament is going to go. They're kind of conditioning those drops. We have four different days of FNCS qualifiers. It's not just about today. It's about the whole tournament and into the finals. The Scopes oh. now gets elimination here. That third party comes in for Scopes' favor, holds that high ground advantage, has that m momentum and that control over the top to jump in jumping down now to try and be confident here toe to toe scoped is more confident than most players you'll see gets three tack tags but unfortunately green tack not hitting too hard for him today this player is now on the back foot but so is scoped has the meds to get back up it's miro it's oh this is going to be a clash of titans two insanely aggressive insanely good controller players going toe to toe this will be a 1v1 for the day this is a huge 1v1 right here. Probably the biggest that we're going to see unfold, especially on a fair setting like this. There's no one in sight to bother them either. It's a clean 1v1, and Miro gets the best of Scope there with the big tag, so it's even playing field. Scope has to run back now, pop another big shield, and they're going to cap off again the full-on reset. 200 on uh, HP for Scope, 200 here on Miro. How's this going to play out? I don't know, but Miro has some crash pads to play into. Looks like Miro Ooh. now wants to back up here, playing a little bit smart, trying to 
Take advantage of the situation. He already has an Elan too. Let's not forget the scope walked in and stole the frag that Miro was working on. So Miro is feeling pretty good right now, but he's going to respect scope in the situation. And it is. It's about figuring out those opponents. You got to suss out your opponents. Some people better at different strengths. All of these players obviously qualified top 100 NA East, but some of them are going to have different strengths over other players. And take a look here. Risk versus reward. Assault is an early aggressor. More than 50% of his elims occur in the first six minutes. And you're looking at Assault right now on your map here, just outside of Pleasant Park. Like I said, Assault is absolutely underrated. And you can see that he frags off in these early game situations. And if this is going to play true, Clicks might be in a world of trouble because he's running right past the Clicks house. Uh, Clicks is just hanging out here at the base and location. Tries to catch a little bit of an ambush onto assault, but he's not going to fall for it. He's not going to even play into it. Instead, he's backing up now to play for better positioning and try to favor the zone here. Yeah, showing that early game aggression. And theoretically, those are the easiest, safest times to pick up eliminations is on your drop. There's no one else around. You have a lot more control than you do in the mid game. So that's usually how a lot of players who will do consistent will play it. Maybe pick up one or two eliminations in the early game. But as they start to rotate and there's those, a lot of those people around you, things get more condensed. You chill out a little bit and you wait till end game. And that's where you got to pop off again. So again, Assault putting on a clinic here of why that is so important as day though. Having us drop spot five, but look, already the difference now. Obviously, those white curses on your map are going to be the Marauders, but look at all the other players nearby. Day has to be careful. Unless he's going to crash pad in here or something, he's going to have to end this quickly. He can't make this a, a long, slow fight. Otherwise, people are going to start pushing up. But no, I say crash pad in. He was a lot more subtle. He was a lot slower. He just crash sneaks up, just taking advantage of that reduction in audio on the footsteps if you are crashed. And it just plays off so much better than if he probably went for what I would have done with the brute force crash pad in tactic. That is true, and it looks like this played out pretty nicely there for Day indeed. On the other side of the world, though, we're looking at a, another engagement that's going on. It's OSP with a 136 AR follow-up onto Cobalt, and now Cobalt falls, taking 81st here. This is a massive frag for OSP, someone who is, again, trying to get his footing into the competition. Let's not forget, placement points do start to get handed out towards 75th place, so... At the very least, you want to be chipping away at those points. You want to have that consistency and get your name up in there as well. We've talked about it. Top 50. If, if like We've looked at how stacked the leaderboard is there. One point, that top 75 or 70th one game is going to be the difference between qualifying for someone. I guarantee one point will be the difference for someone qualifying today. So it is that important as Smash just hiding behind this little palm tree. Again, we're starting to see more and more of this Coral Castle POI coming into play. And there's the crash pad in. Doesn't quite work. Goes against him. But oh, never mind. Adds a little bit of spice to it. A little bit of flavor as he hits him midair. Really nice pickup there from Smash and he's just got to go down, maybe get this loot off the ground, and maybe he's claimed it. He's claimed the Coral Castle for himself. So I'm happy he jumped into the water because that was absolutely filthy right there. The shot, the crash pad, the flashy look, everything, the way it played out, so smooth. And now two points for Schmack there. He absolutely needs them more than anyone else in the lobby, being that he's so far off from breaking up into that top 50. Let's not forget, top 50 was closer to eight or so points so there is quite a ways for him to go but that's all can change right that can all change in one big swing of the game we saw players literally qualify on in i think rokane specifically had that one massive game pushing his way all the way up so anything is possible here top 50 is very much in reach for someone that can pull through with a big victory royale and we talked about that elimination cap earlier in the pre-show. Obviously, at 20, it's not going to happen too much in these final games. I feel like it would be the absolute highlight of the season if someone managed to get to the point of hitting that cap. But it shows the players aren't getting that many limbs that often. Where if you can have an 8, 9, 10 elimination win, that is ginormous for climbing you off the ladder. So any game, it can turn just like that. As Kozzi's looking here with his fight breaking out as there's a very aggressive push there. Kalazo getting pushed onto by Brew and Kalazo looking worse for wear. We've talked a lot today about those uh, insanely aggressive mechanical controller players Kalazo, while being insane mechanically is definitely one of those smarter more methodical controller players i gelling a lot in teams he is the leader of his trio he does a lot of the building and the tapping opting not to be that aggressive fragger like you would see from scoped or miro but putting him on the back foot here let's see if he can have to fight his way out of it i don't think any oh amount of game sense will get him out of it as because he's lasering this play with that epic burst ar that extra scope that was added in this season just proving so important there at those long-range engagements and now with that extra pressure coming from the potential storm surge, Colazzo forced to wait it out. And not a situation he wants to be in because he doesn't have any heals. 
Here's Steelzy, your game one winner, though. Let's not forget, guys, we're tuning into game three of six for NA East day one. It's Fortnite. It's FNCS. It's solos competition. Some of the most intense type of Fortnite you'll ever see. It's when everyone's playing for themselves that things and engagements matter most. The stakes are high here. A lot of money on the line, even for these qualifying days. So, you know, just qualifying aside, you got to get what you can get here. And that's just the least of it. Steelzy, though, 20 points deep right now, right? His game two wasn't too hot, but he did get something for it. But just happy to comment on where Steelzy is here as he tried to close out this fight. Now, Steelzy on a completely different part of the map than he was before. He's trying to get this elimination, though. Maybe this change of gameplay is not working. Has the three floppers, has those four minutes to get himself back in. But this was your game one winner with the caddy launcher. He came out of caddy corners and he won that fight and won the game. Game two obviously didn't go his way. And I'm guessing now him being on this kind of north uh, western side of Sweaty means that he is the complete Ooh. opposite side as he takes it down polarized. So already this game, he's showing that Steelzy has the win in the back pocket. So now he's like, look, I can play a bit more consistent. Maybe those mythic drops aren't for me. Let's just hold it. Let's just play a bit more consistent. Go somewhere safer. And looks like it's coming out from that Coral Castle area as we now have Miro looking like a good inventory. Miro picking up the uh, the items every game. Four crash pads, two floppers, the, uh, the launch pad, maybe because of those earlier limbs we talked about. But... Possibly because of scope coming in, he didn't get the AR ammo refresh. He's only got 16 bullets there, which is not going to be too great for him. Now, that's exactly what I was going to touch on. I was like, yes, everything looks so, so good. But the medium ammo, you know you need it, especially if you're going to rely on those long-range engagements. So here it is. He has to force his way into a box. This is something that he absolutely needed to do. This is a necessary engagement, and it's going to be a huge one. Let's talk impact of what this is going to do for Miro. It's going to give him so much excess material and the actual medium ammunition that he needs to continue to frag his way through this game. Now that he has the firepower, now that he has another additional launch pad as well he can play late on several zones and do something huge for himself right now he can he gets that big refresh now we tune back into nico who obviously won last game with the caddy launcher not dropping caddy though so he hasn't changed up his gameplay as i'm aware of 28 points this is your first place is he gonna go down here is the leaderboard gonna shake up even more or does nico have something to say about it has the slow wow. fish he does he takes down joji gets the limb but he is not out of hot water yet he is still in zone now people are holding him and he does he gets taken down by daxor nico is out of here in our first place gets a few points this game though so you gotta imagine he's still sticking inside that top 10 but but now we've got eyes on people like P God, like Scopes, like Kanata, who are still inside that top five. You can start jumping up there. Yeah, that could have went absolutely way worse for him indeed. At least he got some placements out of it. He did pick up that cheeky Elon because of the zone and the shotgun shot playing into his favor. So with all those things considering, he's going to continue to give himself a little bit of space up there. But I think we're going to be seeing a new first place potentially coming out after this. We do have a few players in the running there. I just saw clicks fall to assault as well, which are huge elims right there. Both were doing so good. Now, though, Archive beams Owl down, and oh my gosh, just look at the big upgrade for him right here. This is another player who needed an impact for medium ammunition, heals, and everything of the sorts, and he's going to wow. find it all now. We've seen two of the biggest impact frags you're going to see in a tournament back up against the wall. That was one of the biggest ones. No no material, no meds, just gets that elimination and gets in and finds triple meds now as well. He set himself up for endgame. Now he can relax. And it was just all with insane AR aim. Takes down Al. As look how insane this is. We see scopes there. Miro picking up elimination. Slacks and Day also picking up elimination. Colossal. Scopes currently in your top five situation. No. Back against the wall. But no, he closes it out with that blue tack. But then he's still not out of it. Getting shot in the back. And he does oh. too aggressive here. Rokane coming in look how many people are here monster it is an absolute fiesta right now i was gonna name this game possibly the game of impacts if Colazo would have gotten scoped there but no instead it was the grief because the lobby used that opportunity to take him out and rokane is gonna be the one on top here now and this is this is so massive right rokane is looking at two players worth of loot right there sitting in front of him so the full-on refresh for him now to keep him at the top of his game here moving in on the other side though Clicks has a little bit of height. We already know Clicks has taken out Assault. I see Graska still in this running as well. I see Miro moving his way forward too. Yeah, and look how many players are all around those edges as well. No one really too central here. They're just going to try and hope to get that half-half potential. In this fourth zone, you very rarely want to go towards that center in case you do have some mobility. It will guarantee you more safely to get half-half, but most of these players are playing for that half-half potential. Can Kanata get it in top five? This would be so huge. 
almost. So half half zone, that zone that's obviously named because half of it is in the existing zone, half of it is outside in the storm. Kanata gets it just a little bit off for him now. He can make a pretty clean rotate straight in and get there, but it's those players that are on that far southwestern section that need to make a big rotate now that are not happy with where this zone went. And that's actually insane. Kanata recognized how easy it was to pick up this loot here, and he's going to be able to sweep up some free gear now to cap himself off and the extra excess material. Look at this. He's able to build a nice, comfortable tunnel as well. That's going to allow him to inch his way forwards without expending his own bank of resources there. Might have been a little AR upgrade, but that's not going to be the focus. The focus right now is to get to the safety of the zone. And just look at that. He crosses essentially for free right now. Although he does have a launch pad and stuff like that for later in the game. He's going to build his way up now, giving himself a little bit more elevation. And I like this position for him. Just got that top 50 placement point as well. And when right now we look at the top, the fact that he was only... Uh... Two points behind P-God, one point behind Scoped. He is now tied. You think that's going to be Ooh. important? And there it is! Adrian not keeping himself covered, doesn't keep his eyes on the zone. He was focusing on those other players rotating, but there was a bigger shark that was even deeper in the water than him. Kanata gets the headshot elimination with that hunting rifle, the second big one we've seen in this game, and doesn't get the refresh from it, but he gets the 50 shield from the Siphon, and he gets another point, which is going to be massive. This could be Kanata's game to take over the lead. Now on the other side of things though, clicks two single eliminations in this game already. So this is now what we like to call Fortnite Endgame where things get really interesting and chaotic for the players. In eight seconds, the first full moving zone is going to reveal itself. Players are going to have to decide which direction they want to play, how soon they're going to want to stay ahead of this zone. And that's where things get really crazy because the players begin to stack and the desperate action on folds rocane inside of a cone there cease inside of the cone there as well and now i'm looking at clicks all of a sudden move his way down and about here through bandit he's trying to get closer and closer to this next safety zone and clicks needs this look at his uh his he needs resources this. 14 bills. Let's hope we can keep telling that story of the impact frags because he needs one right now. He Not only does he need an elimination, if he gets something someone out of the sky or he gets that hunting rifle, it's not going to mean that much. We talk about impact frags as those eliminations that give you what you need. He needs to get an elimination and get the materials. If he takes someone out too far away to get the loot from it, it's not going to help him much more than one point. He's going to start making his way forward now. He's only recycling this mobility. Gets inside. Oh, oh box. No one gets in with him. 146, though. It's clicked. Oh, my god! Insane mechanics. It's Kanata. Kanata gets in his box. I don't think he planned to be there. Clicks didn't plan for him to be there, but Clicks capitalizes. And now he gets all that loot that we were talking so much about. Kanata having. Clicks has it now, and he's going forward with it. You know Clicks feels extra good, obviously being very personally close with Kanata. That's going to hype him up coming into the endgame. And he is a very big momentum player. He is feeling the momentum now going into this one. Yes, there it is. I was going to say, you <laughs> know he's going to celebrate. And it was so worth it. He picks up five, five, five hundred material off of each. So completely capping himself off. He is very, very much in this game. Kanata may have just blessed clicks with the tools he needs to at least pull the top five out. And now it is time to shine. He even has those three crash pads as well. What an unfortunate, untimely place to land for Kanata. Clicks though, making the best of the situation, recycling these rotates. Yes, look, gets all the way ahead now. He is absolutely vibing if I've ever seen it, and you see him feeling it as well, taking a very risky fight down with Dwal. He is going to get traded, though, in exchange there. It's not going to be absolutely worth it, but it's okay. He finds Rokane in the process as well, and his fourth Elam now to recap his shields up as well. His momentum play, you know this is where he's feeling it. That's the problem, though. He needs to just kind of taper it back a little. We talked early. He's obviously insane in those open lobbies, but in these stack lobbies, he needs to know where he needs to relax a little bit. He can get those guaranteed placement points. This is where the placement points start stacking on top of each other incredibly quickly. If he gets that top 10, he can easily see himself jump up into possibly even first place now. He's on 20 points. We'll see how he goes. Some of those other big names. P-God, though, I still do see in the feed, so P-God's still there coming into this game. Second wow. place gets another elimination. There it is. Clicks just drops down and gets a clean elimination he's trying to keep going miro goes down doesn't have a chance to respond clicks he's feeling himself here five eliminations 98 material so 98 builds left and here we go 16 alive he's so close to that top 10 threshold huge right there to take out miro so so good especially seeing the opportunity now another opportunity is going to unfold itself right in front of him Someone's going to be on that same layer. You saw the player's going to have to back up now. If he doesn't give it up, Clicks is in the advantage here with the choke points holding him out. But hold up, though. 
now using this opportunity to breathe take a look at the situation and try to reevaluate what's going on he's still hunting looking downwards towards enemies on height though it's simple up above on the layer for second height gabe gets absolutely demolished by simple and clicks uses that as a free rotate around the outside and now simple jumps down for the loop but clicks takes advantage high ground is his on the two shot box though jace cooking up with archive as well who's on 31 points oh my gosh he was our sixth place going into this archive the highest points in this game as edgy falls now jace the front side this leaderboard is going to shake up massively at the halfway point into this tournament we see centered going down just after edgy we see clicks on going for high ground now he's trying to make his way up there simple taken down to very low health clicks is not playing for second we talk about that against the kids shockwave launch and quite often you are playing for second but no it goes down but it's in the hands of jace does he pick it up does he have the rockets to put it to use or does clicks now have this high ground no jace does get it we see him jump through cease take and low cease now gets the elimination jace no doesn't have control of the shockwave launcher and he launches himself out he launches himself back this new meta is just so much mobility when it comes to the sky he flies back in we have a 1v1 against cease cease has the grapple oh, but if so he gets rough. knocked in his zone, he will not be able to use it he is on low ground can he get the shotgun shot that i believe this is inevitably going to come down to one good shotgun shot will be the difference who has it jace has the rockets to use that shockwave launcher but no comes down the shotgun Ooh. toe to toe jace is brought down so low can cease just get oh one gosh. shot to close it out he can't jace finishes it off and cease with an insane effort one more tick from storm and jace would have gone down that was so close for either which way. Jace barely had any HP. Cease the same. The 50-50 trade with the shot. Oh my gosh. This time though, we have Zeke, Sun, uh, Shia Wager, and Bala to break it all down for us. MDF getting real excited. Joke, at least. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> Apparently Sundown is here, right Sundown? Yes, for me, Sundown! I don't know. Anyway, what an awesome game there. Congratulations to Jay on the victory royale there in game number three of NA East. Guys, what an awesome game. Now we're kind of getting to that halfway point in the competition. Things are starting to heat up very, very slowly, right? Initially, those first two games felt pretty slow paced, and that's kind of what we're used to seeing here in NA East. But immediately, things kind of picked up and are continuing to pick up here in game number three. I lost audio there at the very end, so Bala, you oh. should pick this one up, and then I'll come in right <laughs> after this. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot changing up in, in, in game number three, but mostly it's staying the same, I think. The, the thing uh, that's changing is the players up at the top, I think. Obviously, Jaith wins that game. Obviously, he will rise in the standings. We'll see Cease probably up there, too. But what's staying the same is the way that these games end up unfolding. I mean, Ozzy called it out, right? The mobility that's added in this season. The Shockwave launcher has been an impact in every single game here in NA.